Okay, hi guys. I've had a few students ask me about how to use the AMH as an actual study tool. So not just a reference guide. So basically when students ask me this, I make sure to tell them don't read the AMH cover to cover because it's not a good use of time. Uh, and it's unlikely you'll even retain that much information if you attempt to do that. Uh, so, but there are particular sections which are valuable to read uh, and I will detail it in this video. Uh, what I like is basically the stuff before the individual drug monographs, so uh, relating either to the class effect or to the actual disease itself. So here, for example, we're under combined oral contraception. Uh, so all this stuff right here before we get into the individual drugs is good. Uh, pay particular attention to the precautions and anything that is contraindicated. That very commonly pops up on both the oral and a uh, written exam for interns. So if, say for example, this has popped up a few times um, and I'm pretty sure it's my book somewhere. Uh, so say someone's put on a uh, con uh, this contra uh, combined contraception pill and they had a history of ETE. Uh, so if you didn't know that, you would see that here. Uh, pretty sure that was in an exam not too long ago. Uh, same thing with, uh, say they had a history of migraines and then um, you need to know that it's contraindicated. So stuff right before the individual drug monographs are good like all this, pay particular attention to precautions, uh, contraindications and counseling points. Uh, not the best use of time to go to the individual drugs as uh, you learn most of what you're going to learn anyways from the class effect and memorizemedicine.com is better for learning individual drugs regardless um, whether you can commit them, commit it well to memory here or not, which most people can't if all they're doing is just uh, reading it. Uh, what I also like uh, is the actual diseases when they talk about that. So say if we go to the chapter on cardiovascular and then say if we want to learn about uh, hypertension. So this stuff here is good. So some of this possibly can pop up in your oral or written, more commonly probably your written exam uh, when they kind of ask you about the individual, um, sorry, when they ask you about the actual disease state. Uh, so here you can have like the guidelines on when to treat, uh, what targets we're looking for, what to do if the treatment hasn't worked. Uh, so these are all pretty useful uh, for both the written and the oral exam. So pay attention to all these sections right before uh, the individual drug monographs. Um, and like I said, pay attention to the actual disease, contraindications, precautions, counseling points. Uh, don't be reading. Well, you can if you want. I can't tell you what to do. But uh, not a good use of time to then be going to like Captopril, reading all this, uh, Enalapril, reading all this. Uh, one, because you're unlikely to retain it. And two, majority of what's really there uh, is in the actual ACE inhibitor section. Um, so here in the actual ACE inhibitor section, they'll go through uh, most of the things that you do need to know, like the uh, mode of action, the indication, uh, contraindications. So this is a good one to know. Uh, possibly that can pop up in an oral or written exam where the patient is of Caribbean descent. Um, so you need to know that it's unlikely to be effective. Uh, you don't need to go to the individual drug monographs to know that though. Um, even though it's there, it's all in that uh, one spot though under the ACE inhibitors one as opposed to learning it in each individual one. Uh, now it is good to be familiar with the individual drugs, uh, but memorizemedicine.com is better for that than just clicking on these, uh, uh, reading all these ones in the AMH. Uh, not a good use of time because uh, you're unlikely to kind of retain it because you're not really testing yourself. Uh, now, there are some individual drug monographs which are probably important to read. I would recommend them for the drugs that are low, thera low therapeutic drug index drugs that are common. Uh, so the ones that have low therapeutic index that are, say, in the top 100 PBS or top 100 most prescribed, um, they're good ones to learn individually. So, for example, they would be your lithium, that would be your methotrexate, that would be your warfarin, uh, they'd be your digoxin. And what you notice about all those ones is they kind of belong to a class of their own. So you can't just read the class effect for them anyways. So say if we are learning uh, about digoxin, sorry, I did not spell that right. Digoxin. 
we would just go to that monograph. And here it's kind of important to learn them all, well, not learn it all, but be familiar with it all, as this potentially can pop up in both the written and the oral exam. Uh, so points, especially when they're putting it up in the square, may worsen arrhythmia, that can pop up somewhere in the uh, both exams, basically. Uh, loading dosages, pretty common that might pop up in both the oral or the written exam. So you can imagine a scenario where someone wasn't given a proper loading dose in uh, either one of those exams. So it's good to know uh, these additional informations for the low therapeutic index drugs that are common. Um, so don't be doing this for very like obscure drugs, um, not a good use of time. Um, especially since both the exams, uh, you do have references. So even these ones like digoxin or warfarin, um, you don't need to commit it to memory. Like it's just good to be familiar with what's there. So you can go back and double check it. Uh, that's pretty much it on what I would recommend. So to summarize, uh, individual drug monographs are only good to probably learn if they are drugs that are of low therapeutic index and that are common. Other than that, you should be focusing on the stuff before the monographs. So uh, when they talk about the actual disease state, and uh, the class effect, uh, paying attention to precautions, contraindications, and counseling points, uh, particularly contraindications um, and precautions, as that's likely to be tested. Uh, so that's pretty much it for that. Uh, send me a message if any questions. For this year's current interns, I am running a workshop uh, in four days. So that will be Sunday, the 18th of September. Uh, so we're going to go through an oral uh, intern exam. And I'll be actually debuting my four-step system on the exam. So I think I've worked out a way to even make it simpler on how to pass. Um, I need to fine-tune it a bit. So that's why I'm going to debut it on that day. I'll probably talk about it a bit later anyways, um, but I have to fine-tune it a bit. So I think there's a four-step system on how I think if you use this system that you'd make it even easier for the pass and not fail the oral exam. So I will debut it on that day as we go through um, the practice exams that I write. Uh, so make sure if you're interested to sign up quickly because if you sign up too late, you will have to buy the late fee tickets. Uh, so basically, I need to organize who will be speaking and stuff. So students that sign up later um, have to pay for the late fee ticket as it makes it a bit more difficult to organize everything. Uh, so if you're interested, make sure you sign up soon. Uh, okay, guys, I will see you in the next video or for those who are attending my workshop, I will see you there. Bye.